Hello, everyone. Thanks a lot for joining our SAP community call about architecting with SAP Cloud Platform and AWS. We have uh, Morali Shan Mugham today with us. Uh, before I hand it over to Morali, I'll uh, share with you that you can ask questions in the Q&A tab and Morali uh, will pick it up. Uh, and uh, at the end of the call, we'll have time for uh, open uh, discussion. So, uh, Moali, please take it away. Thanks for the introduction, Moshe. And uh, welcome, everyone. Welcome to this community call on architecting with SAP Cloud Platform and AWS. Um, so, briefly about me. So, my name is uh, Murali, and I'm a SAP Technology Ambassador. My day-to-day -day role is a solutions advisor um, at SAP Australia. Um, I, sp I spend a lot of time working with a lot of customers trying to understand what some of their business problems are and coming up with a way and, uh, or a solution to, to help solve those business challenges using cloud technologies. In the last few years, I've had a lot of requests from customers who have heavily invested in hyperscalers like AWS they actually also you know, ask questions around what's the best practices around architecting with um, you know, SAP applications on top of the hyperscaler. So I've just made a lot of notes uh, in the last few months and I thought maybe I will share my experience and some thoughts with the community. And you can then also use these, uh, these approaches with, with, the, with, with the customer conversations that you would have to. Another thing to note is though I have uh, uh, titled this uh, as architecting with SAP Cloud Platform and AWS, you could actually use the same concepts with any hyperscaler, whether it is you know, Azure or GCP, you could, you could accordingly mix and match things. So I will walk through those things in, in the presentation. So a quick look at the agenda. I'm going to give a brief overview on what is SAP's multi-cloud strategy. Uh, we'll focus on some of the cloud platform services that are available on top of AWS. And I'll also talk about how we could build innovative solutions using both SAP Cloud Platform services and AWS services. And lastly, I will also show how you could surface native AWS services within SAP Cloud Platform. And towards the end here, we'll have some time for a Q&A. So I'd like to start by just setting the scene with these three popular cloud models. So I, even today, I get lots of people asking me questions around where uh, some of these products sit in which layer. So I think it'd be better for, uh, that I just quickly summarize some of those key concepts around infrastructure as a service, uh, you know, platform as a service and software as a service. So at the bottom, what you see is, you know, infrastructure as a service, which has again been popular for the last few years. We've seen a lot of organizations moving their applications from their on-premise systems, on-premise environments to, um, infrastructure provider like AWS. So they go on to AWS, they get a virtual machine, install their software, install their database, put up a, 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 um, a load balancer and, and then provide access to their users that way. So that's, um, that's been very popular and a lot of um, benefits are there around it, especially around cost, being able to outsource a lot of the responsibilities um, to AWS, and then you manage a lot of things along with AWS. At the top, what we have is the software as a service, which is also, again, becoming very popular these days, where you know, we, we also use a lot of uh, SaaS products these days, things like Gmail or Dropbox. We just turn on the service and then start using it. And when you, when you look at an enterprise context, there are a lot of SaaS solutions, and businesses are actually embracing SaaS solution because they're able to quickly achieve what they're trying to do rather than having to install and configure things. Within weeks, they're able to get enterprise SaaS solutions up and running. But what we've seen in the last few years is customers are looking for ways to differentiate their SaaS products. They, or they have very unique requirements specific to their industry or the region in which they operate. And they, and they need some mechanism in which they can extend these SaaS solutions. And that's where they move towards the central layer, which is the platform as a service. So platform as a service is, is a layer where you, know, you can think of it as a set of um, 
tools or a development environment where you can go and create applications using, um, using some of the new technologies out there. And, and you can come up with innovative ways in which you can, you can orchestrate your business processes and then tie them in back into your SaaS solutions. Similarly, we've seen customers who've just moved all these applications, these big monolithic applications from their on-premise to infrastructure as a service. We see they are not able to capitalize all the cloud qualities because it is a big application. And, and for them to be able to leverage all the cloud, cloud qualities, they would need to break, break down this whole monolithic application into modular components based on microservices and then assemble application processes on top of it. And this also makes them to move towards a pass layer to be able to do those things. Now, when we log on to some of these hyperscalers, like for example, I, you know, if you go to on to GCP, you will see the Google Cloud Console, which will have combination of uh, infrastructure as a service as well as platform as a service. So when you go on to Google Cloud, you if you want to use infrastructure as a service, you would create virtual machines, uh, which is the Google Cloud uh, Google Cloud Engine or Kubernetes environments, and then install your applications on top of it. In the same console, you can also turn on some of the past services. For example, if you want to use uh, a big data service, there is a big query for that. So you can, you can use the big data services or machine learning services also in the same layer. So the line is actually getting blurred these days between the infrastructure service and platform as a service. And people, when they log on to some of these hyperscaler providers, you can actually get to do all these things in the same place. And at the top, you have these software as a service. Again, you can think of uh, Google Suite, where you have, again, things like Gmail or, um, or, or your uh, Google Drive, all these things as SaaS applications, which you can also subscribe to and start, start using. Now, in an SAP context, how these three layers uh, work is as what you see in the slide. So at the bottom is the in all the infrastructure providers which we've listed here, and we're partnering with all these infrastructure providers. We also started this journey initially with SAP data centers, but then um, we're moving away from data centers and actually focusing more on being able to leverage the capabilities of hyperscalers. Uh, like um, Google, Microsoft, or Amazon, and, and AliCloud, and being able to offer all our services on top of them. And at the top, what you see is the software as a service. Most of you would have heard of all the SaaS solutions that SAP have, which is um, SuccessFactors or Conquer, Ariba, Fieldglass. So all these are solutions which, again, we're making them available on top of these hyperscalers. In, in the middle is, is the pass layer, which is SAP Cloud Platform. So we've made a, we made a very uh, conscious decision to have a platform that is very open. And that's the reason why we've embraced Cloud Foundry and Kubernetes, being able to build a platform which can actually be portable and made available on any of these hyperscalers. So as of today, we have SAP Cloud Platform on all these hyperscalers that you see here. Obviously, you just have to check in which region these particular um, hyperscalers have enabled cloud platform on top of them. So in, in, in the SAP's context, I mean, SAP cloud platform plays a very big role in, in being able to extend SAP solutions, whether they are on-premise, you know, whether you have an ECC system sitting on AWS, or is it a SaaS solution with, like success factors? If you want to extend those solutions, you can use cloud platform or if you want to integrate these solutions, again, this is where the cloud platform plays a very key role in being able to integrate them. And on top of that, the cloud platform plays a vital role in, in infusing all the intelligence or, or all the new technologies that you're getting to see, which are becoming popular, which were there for a while and which is suddenly becoming popular. All those things are now surfaced through the cloud platform into all the business applications. So that's, that's what is the strategy going forward where you won't be actually given access to a machine learning service to go and build your own machine learning service from scratch. Obviously the choice will be there, but then we're focusing on being able to provide business context here. We know customers would be using machine learning services as an example to be able to you know, pick up an invoice and then, and then extract the information where, like the details around 
what is the invoice number, what is the value, you know, and who it is being sent from. So we are actually focusing on providing those sort of business services that can easily help customers to be able to get up to speed and be able to innovate quickly and reimagine some of those business processes. So why multi-cloud matters? And again, I've listed some of the key points out here. We do get a lot of requests from customers that they want to actually co-locate all their software assets. You know, we have a lot of customers who are running um, their applications on AWS, and they also want to run cloud platform also on AWS. So they want to co-locate everything within one particular DC. Or they could be even legal requirements that a particular um, the platform needs to be in a particular region and it cannot go outside it because of some requirements. And most importantly, it also gives us the ability to make the cloud platform services available by just piggybacking on the hyperscalers. So whenever there is a new hyperscaler coming up in each uh, market, we are able to surface SAP cloud platform on top of those hyperscalers. And, we, and, and the way we do it is by making sure that our platform is open and portable. I've just put one slide here just to give you a bit of overview as to where the current cloud platform available, um, our DCs are available. So you can see again, um, there's, it's, it's all around the globe and there's lots at the moment uh, for SAP and AWS. In the, in the next year or so, the focus would be more on also enabling more and more services on top of uh, Azure, GCB, and also Alibaba. So let's get on to the core of the topic. So this section, I'll just talk about the cloud platform services on AWS. Now, if you've used cloud platform before, you would know that we started this journey on SAP data centers and we called it as Neo. So even today, there are, um, you know, there are plenty of uh, services that are available on, on the SAP data centers. And this is where we began the journey. We had uh, services for building mobile applications, services for creating a fuel launch pad, also services that way you could deploy, uh, you could spin your own uh, HANA service. So we've actually been spending a lot of um, time in the last few months getting all these uh, services also available on on other data centers, which is on top of uh, AWS, Azure, as well as GCP. So in this slide, I'm just gonna focus on AWS. So as you can see, um, all the services or most of them are already available on top of AWS. And the way we do it is because Cloud Platform is based on Cloud Foundry and it makes it very easy for SAP to deploy Cloud Platform on AWS. And over the period of time we've been refactoring these services in order to make it easy for us to move them from the Neo or SAP data centers to Cloud Foundry. So in some cases, you will see that there is a like-to-like -like or a parity. And in some cases, like for example, if you look at integration, Cloud Platform integration is not in parity with what it is in currently in, in, in Neo. It will achieve uh, over, over the next few months. On the other side, if you see, there is also a lot of new services that we're investing things like uh, blockchain, robotics process automation, or this conversational AI, which is to do with chatbots. All these are services which we are only enabling on top of AWS. Eventually these services will come out on other data centers too. Another thing to note is it's not just services that we are focusing on. We're also focusing on business applications. So these are applications which tie into an SAP system to provide that additional functionality. So there is you know, apps for um, real estate. There is also apps for um, budget and spend. You know, if you have an S4 system and if you want to have that additional functionality, then you can turn on this app as a subscription on Cloud Platform. Now, I wanted to give an example of a customer that actually used blockchain service on, on SAP Cloud Platform, which is on top of AWS. So let me play this video. It should give you a lot of information. Saya Jafar, saya sebagai nelayan, saya di laut Indonesia, saya lagi mencari tuna dari sini. This 
scanner is the first step in capturing information about how and where the fish are caught. That info enters a secure blockchain. You can prove that your fish come from the right source. Here in this independent laboratory, we test the food safety. The data generated in this laboratory is fed up to the blockchain. It is then available to the premier restaurants and retailers in the United States. I take the responsibility very personally. I never want someone to get sick. Here we are at the finishing plant. The last step before this fish gets to your table. We track every piece of fish. Share that with the people who end up eating this fish. We have our first look at the new blockchain analytics for the supplier. It pulls up the amount of fish he's caught on every day, how much they weighed, and how much was fair trade. It's not the bad. This is connected to the SAP blockchain, so only specific suppliers will give access to their specific data. Saya bisa membagikan pekerjaan saya kepada dunia. Okay, so. As you saw in the video, so Bumblebee is, um, is a US-based seafood company that deal with tuna and salmon. And, and one of the requirements in food industry is to provide that transparency. Because you see many stakeholders that are being involved in the entire supply chain process as, as the tuna moves from the source to the consumer. Now, you also would have seen that there is an app that one of the consumer was using to scan the barcode. So that's an example. I've put up a barcode out here. So if you want, you can also scan it to just give, uh, open up the app. So that'll give you a bit of a mock-up screen as to how the consumers will, will be able to interact with that app. So basically what it does, it's able to provide all the information from, about the, the fish to market journey, including the size of the catch, where it was actually caught, the fishing community that was in, involved, the sustainable practices that were actually employed, as well as it gives more insights around um, information related to the fair trade certification, um, things like um, the safety tests that were also provided, and, and basically all the authenticity information that the customer is looking for. So this was um, done using the blockchain service on cloud platform, which, was, which is available on AWS. And this slide actually gives you an architecture as to how there were different nodes that were, uh, that were created out of the service and how each of them interacting. There was also a HANA service where information also was stored, for, which was again used for reporting using the analytics cloud solution. So the next one that I wanted to talk about is how you actually build solutions that leverage again, the best of both AWS as well as um, SAP cloud platform. And I got an example uh, for this one too. So the customer that I wanted to refer out here is the is called Rainforest Connection. They are a nonprofit technology startup company, and 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 they focus on preserving the rainforest. One of the things that they wanted to come up with was in a very creative way was how they could, uh, you know, fight this illegal logging, and and what they did was um, pretty clever. They they used recyclable smartphones. And, 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 and they use those phones and which, which would be able to pick up all the sound patterns that are coming up in the forest and would stream that to a cloud. And within this, within this cloud, you have services which will listen to this sound and will detect a particular pattern. So there is predictive models out here where you've done all the training and we have, um, I mean, they have actually help the app identify whether it is the sound of a bird or if it is the sound of a truck that's coming in, which is not authorized. And it would be able to instantly be able to send an alert to, um, uh, to a ranger out there to see, go and check what's happening there. So this was again, a very uh, innovative way that they did. And, and when, you, when you look at the architecture, which I will show in a minute, it's again, it, it was using the best of what AWS has as well as what SAP Cloud Platform could offer. Now, if you want to try out uh, this particular app, you can, I would encourage you to go onto the App Store, um, you know, either Android or iOS, and you can download this particular app and you can select a particular rainforest and it will give you in real time the sound. 
so it's it's pretty it's pretty good you can download it and and go through some of those um the sound patterns out there in terms of the architecture what we have is on the left hand side is aws um uh, dc where they have already created some applications which will which will be able to capture data that's coming from the forest, which is streamed actually through those devices. So all these mobile phones, they are, yeah, they, they, they in real time will, will start streaming the, in, the, the, the sound that they get in the forest. And that will be actually picked up by the APIs or the services in, in AWS. And that was being captured and, and, and stored in AWS. Now with Cloud Platform, what we did was being able to extract that information and apply this predictive anal analytics on top of it to be able to look for patterns based on you know, information that has already been gathered. So we know that if there, is, um, if there is a noise of a truck that's coming in, which is not authorized to, then it can then send an alert to a ranger who can then go in and, and, and inspect and try and prevent uh, this particular activity before it even starts. So that was really uh, very powerful and they were able to actually um, do a lot of things with, with this particular architecture. And they also used SAP Analytics Cloud for um, providing a analytics dashboard for people in the back office to be also be able to view and analyze some of those statistics. So the last one that I want to cover is on how we would extend cloud platform with native services of, of AWS. So this is again a very interesting approach and this is again something still very new I would say it's been there for uh, for for I would say for about a year or so. And and when I say it's new there's still a lot of work that is happening to make this more and more mature into the SAP cloud platform. Now the way it works is it uses something called as a service broker where you can leverage the service broker to surface some of the AWS services into Cloud Platform. So in the, in, in the slide, you can see that uh, the service broker is talking to AWS and then um, there are ways in which you can expose either Postgres or, or uh, RDS based services onto Cloud Platform. Now, when you, when you talk about service broker, the developers, they, would need to be able to access uh, a particular a, a particular application and deploy this particular application into Cloud Platform. So there is some bit of a manual work that needs to be done for, uh, for customers to be able to set up this initial connectivity. So there is an adapter that is available, it's open source. So you need to install that particular adapter and that way get access to the services. The good thing is you get again here you can um, you can get the best of AWS so you you, you rely on the, the scalable and flexible infrastructure resources and on the top you have again SAP's out of the box uh, predefined contents as well as some of the tool sets that are very um, very much more aligned with connecting and extending X SAP solutions. So in the next slide, I actually talk about this open service brokers. So open service broker is, um, is, is, is an initiative which it's an open source initiative and it's a way in which software vendors are able to surface their services onto cloud native platforms, you know, be it based on Kubernetes or on Cloud Foundry. So in the screenshot here, I have given an example of um, how I managed to surface all the AWS services into the Cloud Platform cockpit. So from the Cloud Platform cockpit, I can turn on some of the resources and manage them from here. And behind the scene, these services will be, will be accordingly managed in the respective um, AWS instance. So you can create it and delete it, everything from the Cloud Platform cockpit. And, and in order to be able to do this, you know, AWS have followed the specifications published by Open Service Broker API, and it makes it much more easy for other software vendors to be able to show the catalog of services and also manage that particular provisioning or deprovisioning of, of those instances. Now, SAP is also one of the contributors for these open source projects along with uh, Google, IBM, uh, Pivotal, and Red Hat. 
So another thing to note out here in this approach is you know, we understand that it's it's sometimes a bit tedious you know, to be able to take these um, brokers and then install them as applications on your environment. So there's a lot of work involved. So we have actually making things much more easy by eliminating this process of having to do this adapter configuration yourself and just by providing a simple way in which from your global account, you can just use the resource providers menu and then link to your existing you know, AWS account. So when you provide this information, you would need to provide other access uh, related information like your access key and secret, secret access key. And that way the system would be able to connect with your AWS system and then bring out um, and, and bring out all those capabilities that are exposed from AWS. So this again, one of the SAP supported ways. And, and, and at the moment we have exposed AWS um, Postgres SQL service. So that's the first service which has been made available. So you can turn on and manage your AWS Postgres service, everything from this particular section of cloud platform. Another thing to note out here is unlike the previous options that I mentioned, in this scenario, you will make sure that you have to have a separate contract with AWS. So you still have to get your own account with AWS and um, you will have to manage the billing and everything the, the way you would normally do with AWS. But once you get those things sorted out and, and if you have, uh, you can set, and you can set up a mechanism in which SAP projects can then actually log on through this particular mechanism and then can spin up resources within AWS. So you, st you will have to manage the billings with both the providers, one is SAP and other is AWS. That is if you're going down this particular approach. So I've put a link to the help document and you know, in, wherever possible in all the slides, so you can actually go through and, and, and read, read some of this particular documentation. Um, last thing that I want to just also cover out here is the web page where we have the cloud platform regions. So when you go on to this SAP cloud platform regions and service portfolio, here you, you get to see again, what's the availability of cloud platform across AWS, Azure, GCP and AliCloud. And you can actually go down here and try and look if you have a particular service or SCP service within your particular data center. So let's say for example, if I want to look at um, you know, AWS uh, infrastructure, and if I just want to look at the region, which is um, Europe Frankfurt, this will then give me all the services out here on the left-hand side, that these are all the services, all the Cloud Foundry-based services, which are available. Similarly, if you want to go and you know, see it in a different region, like say, for example, if you want to see what's the AWS services in Australia, then again, the list will change. So depending on the region, you will have to see where each of the services are being deployed. So that's, I think that's all I had to cover for uh, this session. So let's actually open up the floor for some questions here. Okay, so I have one question from Nagesh. So in what scenarios will a customer go for both billing when he can directly get services directly from AWS? So it's a, it's a choice here that the customer will have to make. Like if in, in this case, I just gave an example of a Postgres being made available. If you're just going to spin up a Postgres instance, uh, which actually ends up in AWS, and if you're just creating an application on SC on, on SAP Cloud Platform, we just have to ask if there would be a sort of a value, value or differentiation out here. What is SCP offering here? So I would say in this case, if you're just building a web application, you probably might be better off doing everything on top of AWS. However, if you're going to use some of the Cloud Platform services where some of the services are again, um, being more fine-tuned and refined for 
integrating and extending SAP solutions, that's where it makes more sense to go down that path of having a separate billing, you know, one with AWS and one with uh, SAP. But yeah, if you, if, you, if you don't see any compelling reason, I think it would, uh, doesn't make sense to end up with two different cloud providers and then managing uh, both of them for one particular project. I mean, if you have the same approach of a multi-cloud across your organization for different projects, then maybe you would have mechanisms to deal with some things within, uh, with these things within your organization. But if it is just for one small project that you want to do, then you'll have to think through whether is it really worth it. Um, the next question is, will there be a possibility to get access to the presentation? Um, I'm, I, I'm not sure. I mean, um, Moshe, do you think we would there be a, a possibility to share this particular slide? Because I know uh, you would post the recordings. Yeah, no problem. In the SAP Community Calls page, um, mm -hmm. there will be a link also to the presentation alongside with the recording. Okay. Great. Do we have any more questions? Great, so I guess not. Um, I would like to thank Morali for this uh, great uh, presentation. Um, and like I said uh, just now, the recording and the presentation for the call will be posted in the SAP Community Calls page. I also encourage you uh, to engage in the SAP Cloud Platform tag in the SAP Community. So thank you all for joining. Thanks, guys.